Well, hello there everybody, this is UXW Bill yet again, and this video is going to be a little bit of an explanation about how I did some of the stuff in the uh, ghost story video that I made immediately prior to this. Because although I'm really not pretentious enough to consider myself any kind of a real uh, amateur filmmaker, I certainly do enjoy dabbling in the uh, medium of video recording. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm really preaching to the choir here, aren't I? But over time, you know, I've done some interesting stuff with uh, videotape and have certainly done some things that might qualify as very amateur filmmaking related. So if any of you are wondering how I did some of the stuff or uh, some of the scenes and things like that, I'm going to talk about them in this video. The first thing that I ever did when I got ready to uh, lay out and record the uh, ghost story video was to come out here to the farm and set up a low-slung tripod on some level ground and then I just took this uh, Handycam, this uh, DCR TRV 280 that I bought from YouTube user VWestLife and I took that camera, put it on uh, manual focus, set it up for its uh, moonlight preset and then I took a uh, short video snippet of the full moon out here at the farm because I figured, you know, what better place to do it? This is very remotely situated, it's um, away from light pollution, away from people making noises and things like that. There's just not much going on out here, which is why we've had the uh, problem with vandalism that we've had out here at the farm. It's not a huge problem, but it seems that, you know, maybe once every couple of years something will happen out here that really shouldn't. Now some people have asked me about the flow of my videos, how I make the dialogue flow, and you know, how we get things going. I'm not one who usually goes to the trouble of scripting my every video because it's just a lot of work and I just don't feel like doing that. But you definitely get in, you definitely get out what you put into your video. <laughs> and so I do at least try to think a, think a scene through before I go ahead and commit it to videotape or, you know, whatever I'm shooting with at the time. And so I thought about what I wanted to do with the uh, with the ghost story video. I kind of developed a storyline and I was like, well, there should be this scene and this scene and this scene. So if you're wanting to do the same thing, that's pretty much the kind of thing that you need to do. And it doesn't have to be a huge theatrical production. If you just sit down with a piece of paper or draw a timeline in your mind and think what should happen here and what should happen there and what do I want to make sure that I say in this particular take, you'll you'll come out looking pretty good. Your video will turn out pretty sharp. So that's probably the one tip that I can offer. Now, I did not shoot the ghost story video in order. In fact, this full moon scene, which actually doesn't show up until later in the first half of the video, was the first scene that I ever shot. And then I moved on to the next scene. Now for the next scene, and yes, those are scratches in my windshield caused by the fact that some bozo, some bozo that I know pretty well, used an inappropriate tool to remove ice from his windshield. But the next scene took place not far from the farm, down here at the end of a country road. There's an intersection here. And at that intersection you can go off two ways. And I took a still shot of that uh, direction sign out there. That one with the arrows on it right there. And then after that, went down this hill where there is a very, very neat antique bridge. Now this bridge was fully restored in the late 1980s and it was restored again in the early 2000s when the water level got high enough that it washed the wooden planks out of it. This is a very interesting example of a surviving antique bridge. And I went down this thing at a fairly reasonable rate of speed Oh, there's my truckling starting to roar again. Of course, it's brutally hot out here. And then I used iMovie 06 to speed that video up as well as play it in reverse. Now, I didn't want any of the sound from any of that, and that's one thing that iMovie doesn't seem to handle too well is sound editing. It seems to be, at least as far as I can tell, basically impossible to delete the sound if you don't want it with a particular clip. So what I did is I took all these shots that I didn't want to have any sound, I put them together in one iMovie project, and then I exported the whole thing and made sure to turn the sound off. I also turned the compression settings up to the highest quality levels I could because every time you have to recompress a video, it just does this horrific hatchet job on your video quality. So you want to limit the amount of that that you have to do. 
Other than that, I think that iMovie 06 and 05 before it are both great little video editing applications, especially when you consider that they were included free with any brand new Apple computer of the time. In fact, it's, it's just amazing the stuff to me that those, that those programs can do. They're so much more capable than something like Windows Movie Maker, which I have used for a very few videos. Now, iMovie 08 and later on the other hand, well I say on later, but I've never really never really had any experience with the later versions of iMovie. But iMovie 08 came with my new white MacBook and just drove me absolutely crazy. Oh. Anyway, I tried iMovie 08 and I just could not get along with it. That thing drove me absolutely up the wall, in particular because they had gotten rid of the good old timeline style display where you could just drag and drop your clips. And I also didn't like their video clip management system. So once I had those videos, it was time to go home and do the rest of them. I'm always running into the key keeper. I can't get away from that guy. <laughs> now the first two scenes, I filmed them very late at night. Around, uh, started out around 10.30 and finally made it home around, oh, I don't know, 11.22 or so. I took my sweet time doing it. I could have done it faster. But then I had to uh, do the shots around here, and in order to get those, I started out here on the next day, around the early afternoon, I think started doing this around 2.15 or so. I put the camera on a tripod, and then I zoomed in on these flowers over here and just kind of left the uh, neighbor's truck and van just barely visible in the background. When I was done with that, I went around here, and I believe this is a papaya tree. This is very unique. <laughs> for Illinois. <laughs> I came over here by this uh, telephone pole that's sitting right here and I crouched down and got a picture of the uh, profile of the house. <laughs> bizarre Furhead's not quite as uh, furry as he was but he's still most definitely bizarre. After getting the profile shot of the house, I moved over to get this picture of the chair, again, taking a fairly low stance to the ground with a tripod. I came over here, and for whatever reason, oh, I wonder what happened to the glass plate in our uh, wind chime, that's not good. I came over here and I got a picture of this windmill and I actually handheld the camera as steady as I could. If you watch that scene carefully, you'll notice that there is um, Definitely some shaking going on over there. I came around this walkway here. And I got a picture of one of the two lions that is on our uh, front porch steps here. The other one is, of course, over here. And there's a match set, and together they look very ominous. Then to wrap things up for the outdoor scenes, I walked along, holding the uh, tripod by its stem here, I just kind of walked along this pathway. This was later sped up in iMovie as well. I stopped before I got to the window venting pipe for the furnace, and then I uh, finally shut the recording off here around the sign of the big ugly green hose reel. And then it was time to go inside and do the scene with the stair door. Now to do the scene with the stair door, I actually enlisted Bizarre Furhead to help me out. But I did a little more trickery than that. The first thing I needed was some kind of a, a sort of a camera dolly to get the camera to move smoothly across the floor. And I was going to initially use an old plastic toy wagon that uh, my brothers and I had had as a kid. But I couldn't find it anywhere. I thought I knew where it was and couldn't find it, so I had to abandon that idea. So I just parked the tripod on this chair and then starting right about here where the carpet begins. I pushed the camera and tripod and chair combination up here to the door before stopping the recording. He just walked by with a cucumber, folks. I have no idea what he's doing. And then, the part where I enlisted Bizarre Furhead's help was right here. Oh, that light's not on. He and I took a piece of uh, heavy cord that belonged to him and we taped it to the bottom of the door and then he sat in the kitchen over here and when I made the doorway, when I made the threshold right here he pulled the door shut and that was that. 
And for this, I actually slowed this down in iMovie. The very next thing I did was film my little talking introduction here. I closed that bedroom door over there, and I also took some of the pictures off the wall so they wouldn't be distracting, and so the light switch right there would be more clearly visible. This is my grandmother's old tripod, and it's really the only serviceable camera tripod I've got. She used this back in the day to do her uh, 35 millimeter photography and things like that. And then shortly before her passing, she gave it to us because she wasn't really using her camera any longer. It's not a bad little tripod. In fact, it's quite well made. It's got a very nice camera uh, mount on it. Not anything like a quick release or anything like that. In fact, the screw mechanism here is really, uh, really kind of hokey, but it gets the job done. And it's not too shabby. The only real problem with this thing is... There's no way to be sure. There's no positive action. And I don't know if maybe it's worn out or I'm missing something here, but there's no positive action that tells you that these legs are evenly in place. So every time I was using this thing, I was having to uh, haul out my bubble level and put it on, put it across the top of the handy cam to make sure that I had it level in all the uh, various planes. But it worked and it got, uh, it got through the job okay. So I was all right with that. To round things out, I finished things up by doing the voiceover track. It was the last thing that I did, although it appears at the first point of the video. And in order to do this, the only thing in the world that I did, I composed a simple script on the Dell Dimension 8300 computer using a word processor. And I also used Audacity software to record the audio from the cheap Charlie Radio Shack microphone that I used for the uh, cheap sleep study video. And then I was pretty much through. That was everything. Left, uh, left only the need to glue it together in iMovie, export the thing as a finished project, and upload it. So that was pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them, and feel free to send a private message or a comment anytime. Thank you for watching.